What's up friends, my name is Pi and welcome to SR Lounge. Look, I don't wanna waste your guys' time, I just wanna give you all a sneak peek into the SR Lounge Premium Educational Library. This video specifically comes from Creative Photography 101. It's our latest course designed to teach you how to shoot pro images with just a phone. If y'all enjoy the video, check out the links below and let's go ahead and dive straight in. This reference video is everything you need to know about the standard iPhone photo app, regular photo mode, okay? So we're gonna go over the portrait mode in the next video. We'll cover some other details as well. But right now, let's focus on the standard photo mode. Now, if you're using a previous version of the phone and some of these functions are not available to you, not to worry, most of the things that we teach about this course will still be applicable to you. And same thing if you're using a different phone. You have a Google Pixel or a Samsung Galaxy, all you're gonna do is look up the specific function online to see how to access a particular mode. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. Now I'm gonna use a stylus only because it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see on this top-down camera what you're doing. But throughout this entire course, you can just use your finger. You don't need any stylus whatsoever, even for the post-production side. So let's go ahead and jump into the standard camera app. And you can get there by just clicking the camera app. Or my favorite way of getting there from anywhere on your phone is just to swipe from the top right of the screen. Let me also mention that I'm using the iPhone 11 Pro. So future and past versions might slightly differ. Okay, so from here, we can actually press the camera button and it'll actually take us to the camera as well. Now at the bottom, you're gonna notice several different modes available to you. Now for this course, we're gonna focus primarily on the photo mode as well as on portrait mode. But most of those are pretty self-explanatory and if there's enough of you that want it. Maybe we'll do video courses and other types of things too in the future. We will dabble a little bit in slow-mo in this course as well. So we're gonna stick to the standard photo mode. And there's one thing that I wanna mention before we even jump into anything else. I would highly recommend that you stick with the standard camera app on your iPhone. And here's the reason. Apple's computational photography is incredibly good from portrait mode to simply bringing back dynamic range to simply, and you don't need to know what all these things are. Just know that the quality that you're getting out of the camera app is gonna be much better than most other apps. For those of you that are slightly more advanced and you're like, yeah, but I can shoot raw with these other apps. That's not necessarily a good thing when it comes to an iPhone. In most cases, and I'm talking 99%, you're gonna get better quality out of the computational photography available to you in the standard camera app. So that's what I'm sticking with almost exclusively. Very rarely do I ever open up a separate camera app unless it has a function that I actually need. So stay with this app, you're gonna get better quality, better results, even though you're not shooting raw, okay? If you wanna test that out, by all means, go and make the mistakes, don't believe me, that's fine. I'm just kidding, don't do that, just trust me. The first thing that I wanna show you is the zoom functionality. So we have 0.5, 1, and 2. You're gonna notice on my model, which is the 11 Pro, I have three lenses available. So depending on what I choose, it's gonna to switch to each of these different optical lenses. So I have a wide, a medium, and a tight lens. I don't know if I pointed at the right ones, but you know, that's fine. So 0.5 is gonna be your widest lens, one is gonna be your medium, and then two is gonna be your tightest lens. You wanna choose the lens based on what's best for your composition versus trying to crop later in post. If you choose the lens based on your composition, based on what you want to achieve, you're gonna get maximum resolution. If you crop after the fact, you're cutting down resolution and overall quality of your image. So that's the first thing. Now let's go to AEAF lock. So we do this by pressing and holding on the screen. So I'm just gonna press anywhere on the screen and hold. And as soon as you see that box flash, let's do it again, you're gonna see the box flash. Once it flashes, you see the AEAF lock. Now from here, you can actually adjust brightness up or down and it's gonna stay. See, this is what the standard camera app is gonna do. Depending on what you're pointing your camera at, let me do this. Let me clean the lens, which I would recommend before any photograph. We'll talk about that too. But watch, depending on what I'm pointing at, the camera is gonna naturally adjust the overall exposure to make sure that thing is properly exposed. The other thing it's gonna do is it's gonna focus on whatever I'm pointing at, right? 
If I ever want to lock the focus or lock the exposure so it's not constantly changing, this is where I need to use that AEAF lock. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press the AEAF lock on myself. That seems kind of conceited, it's okay. So I'm gonna zoom in and then push it on myself. Now it gets the AEAF lock and now I can actually adjust the exposure up and down. You're gonna do this by pressing on that sundial and pulling the sun up and down. But see now, when I move the camera, it's not gonna change the exposure and it's not gonna change my focus. This is huge. We're gonna be using this a lot when it comes to, well, like for example, when I shot Yen standing in front of the window or in almost any scene, we're gonna lock exposure and focus so that way we can recompose however we like and take the shot. We're also gonna use it creatively to control the exposure and make sure that the camera isn't kind of doing things that we don't want it to do. So this is probably gonna be the most used function. So remember, all you're gonna do is press and hold on the screen. You're gonna see the AEF lock and then you simply pull up or down on this sun and that's gonna adjust the exposure up and down mode. Next, we have burst mode and burst mode is gonna capture multiple high resolution images one after another, I believe somewhere around 10 frames a second, okay? So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna turn off night mode. I'm gonna explain that in just one minute, but let's go ahead and turn this off. Okay, so, and what I can do is just set my exposure, pull down, okay, and let's go off on night mode. So that way it doesn't kind of, it doesn't get stuck trying to do that. So watch, we're gonna go into burst mode by just holding down the shutter, and you don't need to do any of those things. I'm just doing it because this is pointing down at a table, so it's trying to expose the table properly, but I don't need to do that. You're gonna press and hold the shutter and drag the left, okay? So, whoops, let's do that again. Press and hold, drag to the left. Okay, now as soon as you do that, you start seeing the counter climbing, okay? Now this means it's capturing in burst mode and it just shot 30 images. So I'm gonna click on that now and I can see burst 30 photographs. So once you've shot those burst mode images, you can go back and you can actually select which one of these I wanna keep or I can select multiple images to keep. All you're gonna do is tap the ones that you wanna keep and when you press done, it's gonna say, do you wanna keep everything or just your two favorites? I'll say just the two favorites. And this is a great function when it comes to sports action. And we're gonna use this function quite a bit. We're gonna do it when we get to shooting action. Well, with fruits, that's gonna be cool. And then we're gonna do a shooting action with a person, with Derek, as he does a Superman jump. So this is gonna be your action functionality that I want you guys to remember. Okay, so now that you know burst mode, let's talk live photo because those two are not the same thing. So live photo is this top option on the right side. So right now it's disabled with that little slash through it. If I click it, it's gonna turn on and it'll say live right here. Now, if I shoot an image, and right now I'm using the front facing camera, so I'm gonna flip this back to this camera. I'm gonna hold it up for just a second and zoom in on the set and I'm gonna take a picture. Okay, you'll immediately notice because it flashes that yellow live icon at the top of the screen. Live is different than burst mode and here's why. Well, number one, I can swipe up on the image and I can actually reveal a hidden menu of effects where I can go loop, I can do bounce, which is like a boomerang effect, or I can go long exposure. We're gonna do long exposure later when we want to create shutter drags to kind of drag out water and all that kind of stuff. So it's really a cool functionality. But the other thing, you might think that this is similar because if I click edit, you can actually go to this live function right here and you can actually choose a frame. The issue is there's only one high resolution shot in there and what comes before and after is lower resolution video. So while you can pick out one of these frames, they're not gonna print nearly as well. They're not high resolution. So anytime you want to get to a printable photograph, you really wanna be using burst. That being said, if you just wanna capture cool action, live photo is gonna give you a higher frame rate because it's essentially shooting video. You're just choosing a frame out of that video. So if you need more than 10 frames per second and you don't care about resolution, by all means, use live. But if you want resolution, stick to burst mode. Now let's talk about flipping the cameras. If we wanna use one of the front facing lenses, so see right up here, we have a front facing lens. You're just gonna press this swap button and it's gonna switch and now I can see myself. 
That's a horrid angle. Anytime you switch lenses, so if I switch to the front, I need to make sure I always clean the lens. This little bit of oil, this little smudging over here is what creates that haze. So watch, as soon as I clean that, then we're gonna get a much more crisp image, a much better image with less flare overall, okay? So make sure you're always cleaning your lenses before you start shooting. And if you're worried about using your shirt, get a lens cloth. I personally am not worried. Okay, next, let's go to flash. Flash is at the top left corner right here, and by clicking it, it's gonna turn on. This is pretty simple. It's just gonna be that flash that's gonna fire at the top, and let's go ahead and make sure live is off. Okay, so you have to be pointing at something that's rather dark. I'm gonna zoom in and let's say, click over here. Let's see if we can get it to fire. There we go. Okay, so it's just a standard phone flash. Now, are we gonna use it? Not really. I want to use natural light or existing light or we can set up our own lights, but everything really is gonna be better than that flash unless you're in a situation where you just have to use it because maybe it's nighttime, you have no other options and there is no light, then by all means use the flash. But for the most part throughout this course, we're just gonna keep it turned off. Now let's talk night mode. With night mode enabled, whenever you encounter a dark scene, it's gonna give you a suggested time. So right now pointing at the table, it says it wants five seconds. There's no way we're gonna get the table to a good exposure. But at using night mode, what's gonna happen is gonna keep the shutter open for that period of time. Apple's computational photography is gonna do this magic where it's gonna align the image because your hand's gonna shake and move throughout it. So ideally you use a tripod, ideally you keep your hands still, but you know, it's gonna happen, your hands are gonna move. So it's gonna realign everything to get you a, a nice and sharp image using night mode. So this is gonna be that functionality. We'll use it a little bit from time to time, especially when it comes to like a shutter drag scene, we will use night mode to pull that off. Now you might be noticing this little menu at the bottom. You'll also notice this arrow at the top. So all the functions that we just went over, if you click that arrow at the top, it's gonna bring those functions out in the bottom. You also have a couple extras that I'm gonna go through. If you close it, then it's gonna bring up your camera modes, okay? So let's go ahead and reopen this. And you'll notice that we have flash, we have night mode, we have live photo. What's this guy though? This guy. If we click it, we can actually change the crop in camera. So we can change the aspect ratio that we're shooting. I'd recommend sticking with four by three versus square or 16 by nine. Four by three is gonna give you, well, just, just stick with four by three. You can always set the crop later. But if you wanna go 16 by nine, it's gonna use the entire, basically the entire length of the iPhone. So it gets a little bit longer, okay? So for most everything, I just stick with four by three. You also have a timer in here. So if you ever wanna do selfies, if you wanna set the camera up on a stand or just set it against something, you can actually set a three second or a 10 second timer by going to the timer option. And then when you click the button, it's gonna give you that timer. So I'm gonna press off now. We also have the ability to set our effects before we actually shoot. We're also gonna be able to edit those after the fact. Okay, so we've covered most everything here. The last thing that I wanna do is show you to edit a photograph, we're clicking on the left side and we're gonna go down here to edit. This is gonna give us our standard editing tools. In a moment, I'm gonna go through how to get these images into Lightroom. Lightroom Mobile is a free app and it's far more powerful than the standard editor. It's also very easy to use and we're gonna use it throughout this course. So let's go back now and talk about one last thing. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna to go to my camera settings. The easiest way to get here is just to go to your settings. And then what I would do instead of kind of scrolling through here, you can actually pull down from the top and right here I can press on the search and just type in camera, okay? And then bring up camera right here. This is gonna give you additional camera settings. And I just wanna run over these real quick with you. So one, preserve settings is going to basically keep the camera in the last mode and creative control set that you used previously. So if you don't want the camera to kind of keep resetting each time you exit the app, you can turn this on, but it's not a big deal either way. I usually just keep those off. Live photo, um, if you wanted to preserve the live photo setting rather than automatically reset, this is one that I do keep on because if I want to shoot a live photo, sometimes I want to shoot multiple. I don't want to keep turning it off and having to turn it back on. Grid is hugely useful. Now, Older iPhones are not gonna have this function. But grid is what makes it possible to see, so if, as long as you turn this on, when you go to the camera app, you'll actually see the grid, which will really help in composing your shots. I'd recommend keeping it on. 
Now I'm doing a little shortcut here. I'm actually swiping at the bottom of the camera to go back to the last screen. So bottom of the phone, it'll go back to the last screen. Scan QR codes, whatever. They're useful, keep it on. Record video, I like to do 4K at 60p just so I have the highest frame rate and resolution. And for slow-mo, I keep it at 1080p and 240. But if you want additional video options here, you have that right here as well. Okay, for sound, yes, you do want stereo sound. For camera, I keep it in high efficiency uh, in terms of the, the file type. This is an HEIC file type versus most compatible is usually gonna do JPEG basically. But keep it as HEIC, you can always export to JPEG later. Okay, photo capture outside the frame. So look, this is a cool feature and function, but you have to be careful with this. When you're using certain lenses, well, you don't have all the computational power of the iPhone available to you. For example, if I flip back to the camera app and I go to a, a wide angle lens, I actually can't get night mode anymore on this. So once I flip to a standard lens or a telephoto lens, I do have night mode. And similarly, if you're using wide angle, you're not getting deep fusion. That's, that's Apple's computational photography. So what this does, photo capture outside of the frame, is it essentially uses the wide angle lens to shoot your shot. And what it does is it shows you areas of the image that are outside of your composition. If you turn this on, the phone is gonna try to help you dial in a better composition. But the thing is that you lose that additional quality, the additional computational side because you're using the wide angle lens. So my suggestion to you is since you're in this course, keep it off. I want you guys to get used to composing your shots the way that you want them and not leaning on the phone for help. But do know that it is there. Now videos capture outside the frame, same thing. I'm gonna turn that off as well. If you do have it on, it has the auto apply adjustments. This means that it's gonna automatically apply what it thinks is the best composition. Do you want your camera deciding what composition you really want? No, especially because we're gonna be doing a lot of types of shots that use negative space. And they're things that this camera, the built-in AI isn't really designed to understand. It'll break the rules of photography, despite the fact that it looks great, it'll break its rule set. So I would recommend turning all of these off. Next, Smart HDR, keep this on. This is going to, well, when you get to a high dynamic range scene, it's gonna automatically bring in more detail. You're gonna recover highlights. And again, this is one of those functions that you don't get in other apps. So portrait mode and smart HDR and deep fusion, all these cool computational photography things, we're not getting those in other apps. We might get the ability to do light trails or shutter speed and just other stuff that we'll talk about. But unless you absolutely need it, stick to the standard app, okay? So going back to the standard camera app, the last thing that we have to do is portrait mode and we're gonna do that in the next video. I hope you all enjoyed the video and if you did, I'd love for you to check out Creative Photography 101. The link's down in the description of the video. And this is our first course that is designed and priced for consumers. It's designed to teach you where to begin in photography and specifically how to shoot pro images with nothing but the camera that you already have, your phone. In the meantime, please like the video, comment below if there's anything else that you guys would like to learn and I'll see you all back here same time next week. And turn on notifications because uh, YouTube thinks that even if you subscribe, you don't want to be notified. It doesn't make any sense to me. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.